You know, Jermaine Taylor is quickly becoming one of the more polarizing figures in not just sports here in Arkansas, but all of Arkansas. Uh, that's all we hear on KRK.com. Our assistant news director, Ernie Paulson, joins me. And Ernie, early in my career, I covered eight fights out of about 10 of Jermaine Taylor's. And I know even before that, you had Jermaine coming in this room talking to you when you were the morning show host. Yeah, I moved out here in uh, May of 2000. So that was right before the 2000 Olympics. Uh, big boxing fan. So I, I was, you know, I was excited about Jermaine yeah. and I thought, you know, he was the best. I mean, he ended up still getting bronze, which, you know, mm -hmm. any anyone would take. But I believe uh, the, the Cuban won gold, Russian silver, and I, I thought he was better than both of them. You don't and I can't remember their names. No one remembers their names. Yeah. You remember Jermaine. Um, but yeah, coming out of that, I mean, there's just kind of this hype of this local fighter, uh, kind of this do good story, kind of had a troubled past, come up and uh, doing everything right. Well, we're, we're seeing again, Jermaine, where we don't recognize him almost. And, and you're looking at the pictures behind us and you think about, you know, Jermaine the boxer and now the latest mugshot uh, arrested for uh, domestic abuse, accused of domestic abuse. And we wanted to quickly just talk about the memories of Jermaine and how far it's come. And, yeah. you know, following him, we knew his upbringing wasn't the best. He got Ozell Nelson, his trainer, and things started to change. But what's interesting from your perspective is when he came on our morning show. Yeah, you were, you were, you were talking about that. Yeah. He was an upbeat, a guy that wanted Arkansas, a guy that knew that Arkansas would help carry him to the heights he got to. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of built this relationship with Jermaine, and I'm like, hey, we're gonna, you know, we had him on the morning show uh, early, and, you know, again, he wasn't an A-lister yet, so, you know, yeah. he's coming in at 5.15 in the morning, and I, I'll never forget, I'm like, hey, when you win your first belt, I don't care if it's a red belt, I want you to come on. And he did. He did. I mean, he, I get a call, he's like, hey, I'm downstairs, <laughs> had to come let him, you know, come up the elevator, and he's got his red belt, and he's got the biggest smile on his face, and Anyone that knew him back then, he was so polite, um, so humble. I mean, everything, when you say, like, look back, you don't see it here, but every fight had an Arkansas, mm -hmm. had the Razorback once, got in a little trouble, yeah, but so then, just then, say then Arkansas that kind of worked yeah. out. Uh, but, yeah, just so gracious and, and, I mean, just the nicest guy you could imagine. Well, and, and I have similar stories uh, covering Jermaine. I was in Mashantucket, Connecticut, I believe, for the Carl Froch fight. Uh, and we were talking about which, brutal which knockouts. Didn't, didn't, didn't end well. He yeah. was ahead on the cards, meaning he was winning this fight with seconds to go in the fight. If he would have taken a knee, more than likely he still would have won the fight. Froch ended up just a brutal punch, put him on the tarp. He couldn't get up. He's walking in the, uh, the resort there, the, the casino, and he looked over at me, you know, debilitating loss. And he said, hey, do you need to talk to me? Do you need an interview? Sure enough, he let us do the interview. That was the kind of guy he was because he knew why I was there. He knew I was there representing Arkansas. Yeah. And so getting all of this, these stories back to this week, hearing another arrest. Yeah, which with what the last three, four years, this is how he's been making news. Mm -hmm. It's not what we became accustomed to. And uh, Ernie and I both, I, I texted you yesterday when I got yeah, that picture. Yeah. And I'm not going to show you the picture. I, I have a picture of the accusation. I, I, I don't want to show it to you, um, but it's, it was one of those things that, that shakes us yeah. because not but only I, do we cover Jermaine, we knew Jermaine. And again, for people that don't know, the accusation is that, that he, d domestic battery involving a, a female. Possibly threatened to kill her. Yeah. You hear that, uh, you followed him early in his career as a young guy, he's now 40 years old. You had a very visceral, you had a very emotional response, like I did. Yeah, well, and I've talked to you, there, there's kind of this core group of, of, of boxing fans yeah. that, that we all kind of run with, and everyone had the same response was, you know, it's, at some point, we're gonna find out, and it's probably, you know, like most people, you don't find out until mm -hmm. after they pass, that, that he has CTE, he has some kind of brain damage. Uh, going back to the, you know, you talked about Frotch, in a two-year span, he was brutally knocked out. Three of the worst knockouts I've ever seen. Two of them were TKOs, one of them was just a knockout. But where he just, you know, and Jermaine, the fighter that he was, he would get up and, you know, keep fighting. You know, like you said, take a knee. Jermaine yeah, that, doesn't that wasn't do him, that. you're right. But, I mean, going back, uh, they were just brutal, brutal knockouts. 
he had bleeding on the brain. We know that mm -hmm. he was not licensed to For fight. Years. He had to go back yeah. um, to, in order to get it. And I can't even remember where his, his last fight was in 2014. He beat was it Arthur Abraham. No, he didn't Solomon, beat Arthur. Solomon, yes, Solomon. Sam, uh, Sam Solomon. Sam Solomon. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he basically his last fight, he won the IBF title, but it was only because, uh, you know, one, I think one agency uh, finally him, said, said we'll, we'll give it to you. And a lot of us, we, we all kind of said he doesn't need to be back in the ring. And, and I have thrown around this idea and, and I put it in this article that's online right now. I've thrown around this idea of trying to pursue a documentary. You and I have talked about this, you know, and this, I guess, full cir circle here, getting back to the reason why we're here. This morning, after reading the story on KARK today, uh, after hearing the story, seeing the pictures that, that I shared with you and, and looking at that, I, 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 I kind of got angry. I kind of got upset. And, yeah. and again, I know that the legal system has to play its way well, out. Yeah, I mean, but again, we, 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 just, we walk a fine line. You're innocent until you're proven guilty. Absolutely. His last legal bout ended with charges being dropped because the, um, the victim in that case I, I couldn't be found. And, and you don't ever want to glorify someone that, that you know, some may see as, as a villain, Re regardless of all that. I mean, you can't argue that that last these last few years, and I think Jermaine, and he actually talked to uh, reporter Mitch McCoy mm -hmm. a, a, two days from, like a year ago, two days ago, exactly a year, saying, hey, I, I, want, I want to make Arkansans proud of me again. I want this, I want to, you know, rewrite at least the end. And so everyone's kind of like, okay, you know, maybe this is it, and there was, you know, talk about him, you know, getting back in the ring and doing some things. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you, me, and the other, uh, the people that knew him, we just wanted him to get right mm -hmm. and, and not end up where he is now. Hurt others, hurt himself. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is something to think about. Uh, uh, talking with that documentary filmmaker, he looked at me and he said, Aaron, what's the story? If we make this film, what's the story? And, and I told him instantly that it was redemption because hearing from people in Jermaine's camp, and it's very, I, I can't get to Jermaine now. I don't, I know that you've tried, you can't get to him. But he missed those days when Arkansas was on his back and, mm -hmm. and Arkansas was literally written on him. At, at, at the end of every fight when he would do the post interview, I love you, Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love you, Arkansas. I mean, and, and, and that's, I mean, you, you go back and you remember that. And, you know, like you said, I mean, it, you hope for that redemption story and that would be great at this point you just hope that he's he's going to be okay and you know that's that's all that's you know he and others uh, you know his his you know he had trouble with a family member uh, a few years ago you know it's it's it is it is tough because it's going back to the how we started it it's two different people without a doubt uh, i i remember being at uh, watershed uh, an organization uh, that helps underprivileged families here uh, in central Arkansas. And I was interviewing Jermaine, and he had just brought up pallets of turkeys mm -hmm. giving away. I said this in the article. If you're watching this, you may have read it. To me, and maybe this is out of line, these two people aren't the same people. I think, I mean, I, I think most people that knew him, that's what, the, the, what they would say. And it's hard to say. I mean, again, knowing him like, we did. We and, and going do. and going back to what you said, like the fanfare and this kind of like, not only did, did Jermaine love Arkansas, but he was yeah. embraced by Arkansas. We kind of joked about at one point he put the put the razor back on his trunks, didn't have permission. <laughs> the university yeah. politely asked him maybe to remove it. A year later, I believe Frank Broyles invited him in to give the pregame pep talk to mm -hmm. the Razorbacks. There was a, after he won the title back in 2005, beat Bernard Hopkins, uh, there was a citywide parade just for Jermaine. Shut th down the through, city. Through the streets of the city. And I mean, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, he was, he was Arkansas at that point. He was the most beloved, you know, you could argue most beloved person in the state. Maybe, you know, Frank Broyles uh, above him and, and, you know, a couple other people, but I mean, everyone was excited because it's, again, this, this success story, this kid that had a kind of tough life growing up, 
and, and he's turned it all around. And, and not only is he a great fighter, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for people that don't remember, I mean, again, that's going back to, you know, 2005, 2006-ish. That, that's, you know, when you go back and you look at that and you see where things are now, it's, it's just so disheartening. And you just, you just pray, you pray for the best. You yeah. pray that something, something good comes out of this. Well, and uh, wrapping this up, this is where we wanted to get to was that, again, we will not, and, and, and I will stand here as a, as a father and you're a father. There's no way in this world that we're going to uh, try to victimize the victim and forget about yeah. perceived victims. That's not what this is about. Um, but what you just said resonates so strongly with a lot of different Arkansans. Is that, that's where we're at. Just you want it, you want it to have a better ending than the way it, it's currently going. So uh, you can post right here on kerrak.com. Um, let us know your thoughts about you know this latest arrest by Jermaine Taylor. Um, Ernie, thanks for coming on. Yeah, great Vision. article. I just got to read it before I came on. So it's thank you. Good read. Appreciate that. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Make sure you stay tuned to KRK for uh, all the updates on the pending legal battle of former boxing champ Jermaine Taylor.